Hey peeps, as you may have guessed, there is no weekender this week. We did tell you last week there wouldn't be, but we are still here to give you the results of the Spring Clean Hobby Challenge to keep you entertained in what's going on hobby-wise. Gents, it's been a big year for entries. We have four categories. Well, we did have four categories, but we'll get to that in a bit. But we have vouchers to give away. 50 quid vouchers for the store. Yep, that'd be cool if you got 50 quid to spend at store.ontabletop.com. And we have one to give away in this actual show. Jerry, isn't that right? We do indeed. Uh, if you want to comment on the YouTube channel or on tabletop.com with the video, you can be in with the chance to win your very own shiny 50 pound voucher for the yeah. store. Get your comments in because we're picking up someone at random. Someone who's going to win that 50 quid. And how do we have another 50 quid voucher? Because we did have four categories. We had the tutorial category, the skill category, and the idea category, and then we had like a junior category. But guess what? Nobody no answered that because we're all crusty gray gamers. Look at this. <laughs> Look how crusty and old we are. Speak for yourself. I've got no gray hairs at all. I've had to actually dye this. This is a flower. <laughs> Go with a toothbrush and some flower before we start filming just to, to add the aging. That's it. You've got Weathered like the, my hair. The negative version of Just for Men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the way to do it. I don't know why. I I mean, we had hundreds of entries. So I can only assume that the homeschooling just took up all the junior based time. That's gotta be what it was. Yep. Yeah. That, that must be it. Mm. But lucky for you, you get to win voucher here by comment. Get your comments in for your chance to win. Right, gents. The first category we're gonna go dive into. I believe we have uh, a couple of runners up, and then we have like the final winner yeah. who gets the 50 quid voucher. Yes. So, yeah. first category we'll have a look at is the tutorial category. Mm -hmm. So, who, indeed. who are we going to look at first? Well, first off, um, before we dive into any of these, they're not solely based on numbers. Yeah. Uh, so, myself and Ben have been browsing through these over the, the last few months, and then we, we went through them, and some of the are resurrected which is the whole point of the Spring Clean Challenge. So they may have been running for a couple of years and then took a hiatus and then came back, which means they've had time to build up more votes on their, their projects than other people who have just started during the challenge itself. So we didn't solely go by the numbers. So if you happen to spot somebody who was lower down the rankings, that's why, because we picked our favourites. Just a little mm. bit of a sprinkling of us in here. A little bit of personality. A little bit of personality. <laughs> um, so first off, we're going to have a look at the tutorials. Yes. Ooh, am I going to find bloody budgers and badgers? Budgers? Badgers? Budgies? Budgies Budge and badgers? Bud budger and badger. <laughs> Mashed potato everywhere. Weirdly, I didn't pick any burrs and badgers stuff. Oh, <laughs> And there were a few. We could yeah. have. Um, but yeah, so the first one um, is from Wolf CH or Wolf I guess. Um, and um, there's quite a lot in a lot of these projects, so we're just going to sort of skim through them and give us give you our thoughts on them all. But um, mm -hmm. this was a Flames of War based one, and I'm sure Jerry can go into a little bit more detail about this. Look how many recommendations this mm -hmm. project got. Gee whiz! Yeah, exactly. Wolf, Wolf uh, has gone the whole hog with this, so it's not just one particular um, force or nation for Flames of War. He's he's gone through the the four big nations. So you've got US there. There's some British. Um, there's Russians and Germans, of course. And the nice thing about this is the tutorial side of it. It, it breaks it down, not just the painting, um, but even into what's going into the army and why it's going into the army. So if you're looking to get into Flames of War, it's a nice catch-all because you go, okay, well, this unit is being built for this reason. And then the detail he actually goes into when it comes to painting and weathering is exceptional so even if you haven't really done armor before in this scale this could still be applied to 28 mil figures because there's nothing in this that is solely or uniquely small smaller scaled um and as you can see from the the russians there the end result he's got is absolutely sensational and he does start with the zenith primer and wow. then works his way through so you can go okay there's quite a lot of photos in this but there's also a lot of detail going of zenith this then this is my base coat. Then after this, we hit it with a varnish and we apply this and then break out a pencil. Um, you know, so even things like the paint mix that he suggests there for the airbrushing is like 20 drops to 10 drops to 15 drops and then two bar pressure. It's all in there. 
So the thing we were looking for with the tutorials was the detail in the tutorial. The end effect didn't have to be fantastic, although this one is fantastic, but it was the ability for somebody coming in fresh to actually see these and go, okay, how do I end up with an end result similar to what you've got? And then they can follow the step-by-step and it really is as close to step-by-step as you can get without uh, somebody taking you by the hand and sitting beside you. This is a good idea. Is this a pizza box? It is a pizza, pizza box, box, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that pizza box, I don't know if it's the same pizza box all the time, but there is that pizza box is his uh, go-to holder for when spraying, which is genius, really. Gee whiz, look at all this. I'm not going to get open every pick, but... Yeah, oh, yeah. Some there, picks. Are, those are, there are so um, many entries and stuff for yeah, this one. Those are um, Americans from Sicily, you can, or possibly. Yeah, it looks like the Sicilian... Uh, force because they've actually got camo on their Shermans, which is something I toyed with doing and then thought, no, thought better of it. It's just a thing of beauty. Um, and it really is. Water, and, yeah. it's, and it's updated so regularly as well um, that it's still, you know, chunking away through there. So it's definitely and it's, one, it, it's, it's one of the things that we're probably going to come back to whenever we talk about any of the entries that come in for each of the categories, but like they're all pretty amazing. And yep. there's still a load of stuff in there. Um, so it was quite hard to narrow it down to sort of winners. And stuff like that. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. But yeah, so that, that's, the, that's the quality of our runner-up. <laughs> gives, you, gives you a rough idea of the task yeah. we had trying to narrow people down. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic work then. Mm. Really cool stuff. I'm going to have to smash something. Oh, I'm not logged in. Crap. <laughs> oh, well, better luck you can do time. it later, Lloyd. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't right. worry. You can go in there and find out how to build your uh, Cromwells. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm you can't really use them. resin ones that are one piece hulls, but you know. <laughs> but I can just use them as the reference. Perfect. Oh, well, that's true. You can yeah. always use them as a reference. Wow. I can't wait to see what's next. So the next one uh, is one that has already received a golden button back a little a couple of weeks ago but this mm. is dark danigan um or Dadigan, who was working on spring cleaning the wasteland um so this is a selection of absolutely fantastic looking um fallout terrain. and one of the key things about this one that was great um is that it kind of it fell obviously into the wheelhouse of exactly what the spring clean challenge is all about so it's taking something that had been sitting there for a really long time and nothing had been done to it and then going into loads of detail to sort of bring it up to something uh, new and you know useful for your games and so as we discussed in the past for this one and as you'll see when we're looking through the images for this as well this was obviously a great looking set of terrain that has been painted up to look very realistic within the world of um, uh, fallout and sort of matches that aesthetic very nicely but all the detail work that went into the posts and stuff is, is fantastic. So there's lots of sort of um, deep dives into exactly how to get those rust textures and all the different paint qualities through there and everything like that all the glow effects and that kind of thing too is really awesome. So this was, again, another one of those projects that sort of it, it basically shows you how to start from the very basic looking either scratch built resin miniatures or whatever, and then take it through to that finished product uh, in a lot of detail. Wow, even the vegetation's in this one. Even the yeah. vegetation. Cornfields. Oh, I have to make some you need, if, if you've got those plus uh, 28 mil scale figures of Hansen, you could replay the children of the corn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming they make those. But yeah, uh, it, yeah. it, I was going to say it's just it's one of those interesting ones as well, where it's not as I was saying, it's not just sort of working on pre-existing terrain that either comes in kits and that kind of thing. There's yeah. also a little bit of scratch building in there as well, which I think is always good too. Well, even the stuff that is coming, like this pre-painted stuff from foreground, we've gone in and done some. Extra weather, yeah, a little bit of extra work here and there. Really this was this is more comprehensive than Wolf's in that it's not just about the figures, mm. although he does go into the figures as well. But this is everything for the gaming table. So the figures, the terrain, um, the scratch building, the detail work. It was bits of everything. And again, it's one of these things where you might not be playing Fallout, but you might be playing 40k or The Walking Dead, um, and everything in here can find a home somewhere else uh, especially the things like the work that he did on the uh, rusted cars i don't know if they're scrap cars or if they're they're still running or what um, but just showing how he started off and, and doing the 
the zenith and the, the undercoats and working his way back up to this sort of battered looking no idea what they are some sort of space cadillac um <laughs> yeah but, here we go yeah yeah that's a, a prime example because that's show this off real quick before we go past it. look at that look at all the details on that mm -hmm. like who's going to go into all the extra detail on like a desk this this person is <laughs> well, and, and I mean that's one of the things that's less well detailed yeah. dare I say it um, I do like the heart that's been carved in the back of the toilet door I don't know if that's oh, actually yeah. on the miniature or if he's done that I'd like to hope he's done that but I think at one point he has um, images from Fallout that he's then recreated inside some of the buildings so he's gone like here's a screenshot and then I've matched the tiling on the floor and I've you know dived into sticking the bottles of yucca cola or whatever it is on the shelf and it's it's a really nice nice guide to how to how to get the most or how to be as realistic to the the computer game as you want but at the same time it's still very achievable for people to use this as a basis for non-fallout games yeah for pretty much anything that yeah. you're looking at in terms of terrain especially if you're trying to make that slightly more battered and well-worn selection of, of options for your games Oh. Yeah, this is the bit that really caught my attention is just the sheer amount of additional stuff that goes into the world that he's creating here. Yeah. All these oh, extra boxes and all the extra detail and all the time that's gone into painting stuff that other people might just look at and go, oh, I'll just spread that color and perhaps just yeah. a wash on it. Yeah, it's the, the incidental terrain really helps set it off. Um, and it's, it's, Things like this where you've got side-by-side -side comparisons as well are very good because you can see it's not just everything has got the same the same finish. It's yeah. not like that this is the way I'm going to do that, therefore everything will end up looking exactly the same. There's there's the individuality within the pieces as well that's been uh, you know, yeah, impressive. there's individual weathering going on to yeah. a lot of the different components and stuff, which is really cool. Rather than following a set pattern for each individual piece. So hmm. That's a fantastic project. Really cool. Right yeah. then, hmm. that brings us to our winner, our first winner of the Roll tutorial please. section, who's going to get our 50 quid voucher for the store. If you are a winner, you need to come on over to the website and claim your prize. So make sure and come on over and use the claim the prize button and stuff like that to let us know where to be sending your voucher. Right, gents. Who is the winner? Uh, so the winner of the tutorial um, category for this year is yep. Lorno, who did a exceptional product uh, project showing off something a little bit different. So this is the painting of the brisket bust that people will know from Steve Forge Games Guild Ball. So this is obviously oh, sorry, and it's also from Broken Toad as well, isn't it? As well, yeah, the, yeah. the sculptor, yeah, but. Um, yeah, this was a very awesome project where I basically took a bus that hadn't had seen any work for months and months and months and went, right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set out the start of this and finish it by the end. And uh, yeah, there is an astonishing level of detail and uh, substance in all of the different elements here when it comes to painting these up. And quite frankly, the final miniature is pretty fantastic. Yeah. Which is good, so. <laughs> the thing that caught my eye with this one, apart from the title, which is particularly cheeky, Lorna, so go you. Um, was when he's getting into the actual uh, tutorial. So, for example, there, that head was done when he took some online airbrushing classes and he's linked to the classes and he's linked to the person who taught them so that people can go and follow the tutorials that he's learned to get him to this stage. And then he's then applied these techniques to the miniature. And so you, you get this progression that you can, again, backtrack so you if you wanted to get something to the standard or follow along or, or learn new skills, you can use this as a stepping off point. You can, you know, go, I, I want to, it may not be a large scale bust. It may just be that particular skin tone done with airbrushing. Um, if you're painting a lot of naked Celts or Picts or <laughs> Rackham confrontation Keltos or whatever it happened to be, you know, going, oh, that's a really nice way of doing that. And I've got a lot of that to do. How did you learn how to do? Oh, you well. Here are the steps. Here are the paints you used, and and it may be a case that you go in and and replace certain aspects of it with uh, things at home, and then follow along. So it's it's really nice. Um, mm. 
and it's 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 not just that it's achievable it's you've got the step-by-step -step guide and it's very clear it's very concise um and i think i think that's one of the key things with that is that when you look at how it's all broken down hmm. not necessarily just by images but by the text underneath it and all yeah. the descriptions and stuff as well you can actually see the difference between putting that first layer of flesh tone onto the model and then doing that little bit of highlighting before moving on to the next step of highlighting. So that if you're following along, trying to paint exactly like this, you effectively do just have that step-by-step -step guide, which I think is great. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's got the full-on tutorial treatment. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, very much so, um, which is what we were looking for. It's, it's, it's how good was the tutorial? Um, how easy would it be for somebody who's never seen it before never tried it before to pick it up and follow along with it now obviously there's a particular set of skills required for airbrushing or you know just brush painting um that require practice but if you're wanting to do something like this you don't necessarily have to practice on expensive busts to begin with um you can get yourself a, a rake of cheap one sixth yeah. action men or whatever happens to be and practice on those and then you can always practice strip it practice strip it so you you can build it up over time and i've i'm trying to get into airbrushing more and more and it's one of these things where i go okay well let's let's just focus on this one aspect let's focus on doing the skin tone the way he's done the skin tone and i can break out a miniature and just follow those those steps those paints uh, and approach it the same way and just keep replicating it until I've got it down. And it might be that it's going to take a few months of work, but all of the detail is in there, along with those additional links to other bits and pieces that he's happened to have done in the past that he's using those. I mean, that, if you stop there, the fact that he's gone in and photoshopped two steel cylinders over the hair bands to get the idea of where the highlight placement is going to go when he actually paints it is a nice little touch. Yeah. Because it's case, okay, well, these are, this is where the light will hit the metallics in this order. And this, if I put it on the, the miniature in a similar direction and size that is actually there, then yeah. I know my highlight should be here. So doing non-metallic metals like that is, is very clever. I have opened um, this. Maybe we'll get a comparison when we get further down. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, there's the completed, completed bus later on. But, yeah, it's, it's all there uh, and a stunning amount of detail. So it really is. It's a fantastic project while it's a very short project but it doesn't need to be long to be comprehensive i think was the main thing <laughs> short i've been schooling for ages no but you're going to hit the end soon i mean and there's the... <laughs> the sheer amount of effort though going into this project mm. is evident not just in the quality of the painting and, and the work itself but the actual yeah. tutorial see when you stop and start constantly during a project mm. because you want to bring people on a journey with you that really adds to the time yeah, yeah that's, exactly. a big, that's a big effort the uh magi mix being used as self-made concrete yeah in the in the bottom of a surf lid to give it stability <laughs> it's a bit wacky so that that's yeah. his own little plinth so obviously it didn't come with one but yeah that's there we, that's yeah. Our, our finished there. and then at the end we've got the original miniatures that it's it's based, sort of based on, on essentially yeah yeah, yeah. And it's nice yeah. here because you can see from the first miniature, which is 2016, and then there's the second one, which is the new sculpt, is 2017, and now three years later, you can see the progression in Lawner's painting as well mm -hmm. from there, uh, which is basic, simple, yeah. neat, but nothing to, to shout about or write home about. And then two years later, you can see there's a, a good step up there, and then another two years on actually producing a bust Gee, like that. Yeah. You know, it speaks volumes. Well, it speaks volumes that there's hope for us all. Yeah, like exactly, a lot of us yeah. are floating around this stage thinking we'll never get to this stage. Yeah. And, and I imagine a lot of that comes down to the tutorials he had about doing the airbrushing and doing the skin tone with somebody else. And he's now passing that on. So it's, it's just finding the next lessons you need to learn. And they could be from a a tutorial with somebody an online tutorial just watching a you know video painting tutorials or getting a book and giving it a go um and with that guide essentially in there you really could i mean non-metallics is something i've never bothered with but things like the 
the taking the the photographs of the brass rod to get an idea of where the highlight should be on those bands in her hair is a is a genius little trick and it's one that people could do at home it's the same as when somebody's trying to zenith highlight and uh, you know if you take a really heavy top down light on something and take a photograph and then that shows you where your shades and highlights should be even if you're not actually doing zenith so it's That's a good idea tricks that you can use to just push yourself to the next level and i think um i think that's a, a fitting example of what you can do when you, you find a tutorial that works and then just push on i presented that's... an incredible debt as we've mm. seen so 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 a, a worthy winner there of a 50 pound voucher i think, mm. <laughs> wow. I think so. yeah. absolutely fantastic mm. get your claim in get your claim in you deserve your exactly. 50 quid you yes. really do. <laughs> wow. Right, mm-hmm. gents, to keep us moving, who's coming up next? Are we moving on to the next category of skill? Yeah, so uh, the next category is skill. Um, so sort of, obviously, a lot of these different categories kind of meld into each other and all that kind of thing. But skill is very much a sort of uh, look at the end product and exactly just how good it is when it finally gets finished and stuff. Um, and so the first of the runners-up for this particular uh, category is Laughing Boy. Mm. Uh, and this was for the Hero Quest Spring Clean. And again, this is one of those challenges that was taken up at exactly the right point at the start of the Spring Clean Challenge earlier in spring and then finished in, uh, well, in good time actually for the, uh, the, yeah. uh, the end point of it. But the main thing that I wanted to highlight with this one in terms of the actual skill element of what's been done is that a lot of the work, well, a in fact, all of the work that was done effectively for the Hero Quest miniatures that were done from the core set was actually finished off using contrast paints. And this is something that a lot of people have been trying to get their head around and sort of dive into when it comes to uh, uh, painting right now, especially for a lot of board game products. But then when you look at the finished product here, you can see there is an exceptional amount of skill that Laughing Boy has managed to so get his hands on the starting point off. and yeah. the end point here yeah. exactly yeah and um it's one of those things where um obviously laughing boy has been doing a lot of streaming recently and showing off all the work and that kind of thing but a lot of the sort of focus of what we were looking at with this project was that kind of fantastic end result which looks neat and clean even when using something a little bit more sort of like sort of esoteric when it comes to uh yeah contrast paints um, oh yeah. that's so cool but it does just look. It, the thing that I think is key about this is that Laughing Boys used the contrast paints in order to get that really awesome looking retro feel to the Hero Quest collection. And as you can see, it looks fantastic when it's all set up and, and done on the tabletop. So yeah. <laughs> and while the um, the project itself doesn't go into a huge amount of detail on the actual techniques he's used, because he has streamed them all, he's included the videos for each thing in there mm-hmm. so you actually can follow along um because it's, it's more or less broken down into the various monsters or heroes and then you can go and watch the stream on those or even the furniture because mm-hmm. the furniture did get a bit of a, a touch up across the board as well so the skill is in there but unlike some of the other projects it's presented in a different way in that you've got the the videos sitting there that you can just click on and and have going while you're you're playing around doing something else but it shows how quickly you can get a very good uh, set of board game figures put together or if, you know if you want war gaming figures in a similar style you can do that as well um, but as he was going through it he was trying out things like the essentially the wet blending technique uh, mm-hmm. on the gargoyles um, sword to get the flaming sword effect so there, there's different things that he's been trying throughout the the project and just giving it a go and going well that works really well and this works well and this is all very comprehensive achievable by by anyone um and it's been done like we said in a in a very short amount of time to very good level this is cool i know yeah. it sounds so boring because they zero in on furniture but just the shading these managed to <laughs> yeah. achieve on these bodies exactly and yeah. canisters and, and things and again i'm pretty sure that's partly down to um the undercoat and then the contrast because the contrast gives you that natural yeah. shading as it, as it plummets down. So it's, and it is, it's those, all those little pieces together. It's all been done. You'll find projects that have got a higher level of work uh, on 
something like you know on the heroes and then on the maybe the monsters there's less or maybe the all of the models get the same amount but then the furniture mm. just gets left but it's this every single across bed, the board yeah. across the board got work done on it to give you and a very nice you can you can see when you look at in, for example those orcs mm. it's using the skill and and techniques learned through using contrast to get things like rusted weapons and all that kind of thing and dirtied cloth and that stuff too and then again, as we were saying, as was Jerry was saying before, that blending. So, for example, on the gargoyle, you've got the sort of, sort of way that the fire was blended, with all those different paints as well to it. So, it, it's it's showing off that you can do some really nice skilled work with the contrast range, and you know whatever comes in the future as well. Mm. So, it's not just something that you can sort of go, oh well, don't don't want to use that. <laughs> tartan tartan and check paint. That's what's coming next. That's what's next. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Great so it is cool basketball. because like people might think, oh, what's it in the skill category for if it's all contrast? Well, because he's showing a, a skill level with the contrast paint. Exactly. It's a skill yeah. level that a lot of people can aspire to get to. Mm-hmm. You know, because oh, not, very much so. You're not, you're not showing them, right? Here is my skills from years and years and years and years and years. He's going, here's my skill set with a new way of painting that I've managed to Learn effectively within the last year or so. Within, within the last year. Yeah. Let's, let's try and pass that on. Which is really cool, right? Laughing Boy was our first runner-up. Mm. Who's the next runner-up? Uh, uh, Jerry, if you want to go with this one, uh, I'll I'll go right ahead then. So our next runner-up uh, is a little bit of Infinity from Josh Togo or Josh Togo, t- depending depending whether we're, or not you're taking your. We're in the skills category, but we have no skills for pronouncing these names. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Well, it could be Togo, like the island, or it could be to go like a carry out. Let's find out. I'm going to go with Togo, like the island. All right. Well, you do that. <laughs> I'm going to go to go. I imagine he's, he's on the carry out. Um, and this, this is, again, it's one of these ones where they've kicked in right at the very start. Literally, here's my stack of boxes. Yeah. And I want, by the end of the spring clean challenge which was three months uh, I, I want these all gaming um with the view that let me let me push on and do additional let me start uh, with his boxes then so yeah here's the boxes oh that is a stack of boxes isn't it yeah oh yeah well you can see there there's the infinity boxes stacked up yep and it's like i've i've got all of this for and several, i've never painted it yeah, yeah. Never painted <laughs> it. and it's like four factions worth and by the end of three months i want four gameable table ready factions mm-hmm. and you're looking at it going oh, good luck skipper I, I mean i'd be lucky to get a tag done probably but uh, you know it gets kicked in gets them cleaned up and then decides on um it's essentially color primer color basing with a striking main theme color yeah uh and also don't melt your miniatures that, oh. that, that, that's a little public service announcement um, he overheated. He used a lighter on a sword to try and bend it. And oh, the melting yeah. point, for, yeah, <laughs> for people who don't know this, the melting point for white metal is it's like less than boiling water. It's, it's, it's shockingly low. So it just went, disappeared. Anyway, <laughs> once you get past the, the, oh, the, the various oh, it's, factions, it's not like it snapped off. It just went, yeah. oh, yeah, on. yeah. You put a lighter anywhere near white metal and it just now <laughs> a pool of metal on the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've all been there, done that. You? Couldn't even glue it back on. Yeah, but but this is the collection he started with that he was aiming to get painted. Um, now I don't think he got everything done, but he has got a more substantial chunk done of this than I thought anybody would ever. Mm. And you get this beautiful work through where he's got things to, I would say, above average gaming standard, mm-hmm. with a very distinct look for every faction that he can come back to and add more detail if he wants or leave them as is. Uh, and this was the, the, the sort of the main thrust for his project was to get them looking table ready. Yeah. Um, and things like the, uh, oh, these were, I can't remember where he got these from because I had a conversation with him one night. Um, they're base toppers. Anyway, I'll probably say somewhere in the project, but he, he grubbed them up and he was putting them on. It was like, oh, that kind of looks good. but. I'm not so sure. I think with the Pano, because that's the Nomad, so you get the, the idea that they're they're traveling on their big ships and everything's a bit grimy. With the Pano section, he actually goes in and he 
started doing uh, sepia wash, airbrushed around the outside edge. So you get like a spot highlight in the middle of the bases, which really pops them out more. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not just the level he's achieved, it's the amount he's achieved yeah, during this time. That was, that was just one entry we were looking at. Yeah. <laughs> that was one entry. That, that was one faction. That was, boom, done with the nomads. Now I can move on to the Pano. Yeah. I think, I think one thing. of the key things that he also talks about in the sort of run-up to the creating the project as well mm. is that one of the things that was holding them back from, from actually painting it was the, the fact that it, Infinity Miniatures can be really quite imposing yeah. I mean, it's just to try and paint because they're incredibly well detailed. But the the skill element of this that is is sort of brought to the fore as part of the project is, you know, you, you can paint these and you can make them look good. And even though, as you know, self aggrandizing and saying like, oh, we're going to do it to a, a you know a tabletop level scheme, yeah. it looks fantastic. It looks great for for what what um, Josh to go wants to use on the tabletop. Uh, yeah, and really sort of hits home that kind of aesthetic of each of the different factions sort of bringing that to the fore and then adding those really nice sort of cyberpunk sci-fi elements so you know like the cool ice cold hair and all that kind of thing that you see on some of the miniatures and yeah, the glow very, of the weapons and that stuff as well very anime very manga-esque exactly where, with yeah. people with these bright poppy hair colors and uh when you're achieving results like that you know i can't think of anybody they, they look great. Be happy to yeah. put those on the table yeah. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a thing of beauty. And again, it's it, one of these projects where it's not just focused on one thing, mm -hmm. because some people can be very skillful in painting certain things certain way. Um, but you often hear some people go, oh, "I can't do red, or I can't do yellow, or I hate flesh." You know, uh, hey, that's me. All of across, those things <laughs> across the board. Being able to to hammer these out um, was was just really really nice to see. It was really good. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Second runner up. Right. This brings us to our winner. Mm. Yes. The 50 quid voucher. Here we go. Yeah. So, the winner of the skill category with a 50 quid voucher to their name now is Pathetic Berserker. Uh, and this is for Spring Cleaning Hell. Uh, and so, this <laughs> was again one of those um, projects that, like, took again like a board game and then took it to this like the nth level of skill in terms of the painting for this mm. uh, and i'm really jealous because i really want to get myself some hellboy miniatures but anyway that's a different <laughs> thing <laughs> of my own but um but yeah the actual finished quality of the miniatures from this is fantastic now the miniatures themselves are looking great obviously and you could tend to go with like a you know stand and slap paint on all the miniatures but the amount of detail that's gone into not just the heroes but all of the actual um, like troops that you fight against and the monsters and all this kind of thing, it all looks fantastic. And the added element of sort of awesomeness on top of that is that it's done in that comic book sort of Mike Mignola Hellboy cover of the board game style. So it yeah. all looks really poppy and bright and fantastic, which is good. Which we haven't got to yet. So which we haven't got to yet. Yeah. We've seen all the different processes, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's gone into that. Now, you can see the amount of detail he's gone into here. He came very close to winning the tutorial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a toss-up in the end. Yeah. But, but yeah. when you start seeing um, how he's actually put this together and done it so quickly, and then you see, you know, like uh, the Conqueror Worm side by side with the, the art cover or... Um, the same where he's he's done things like um, there's a crocodile wrapped around a statue and he's going there's something wrong with this and then went back <laughs> to the front cover and went it should have tiny bat wings so I'm <laughs> going to sculpt the tiny bat wings on so he did sculpt the tiny bat wings on and as you've seen at the start there the brain uh, in a jar you know things like this where he's just gone in and went you know what this needs to be more Hellboy mm -hmm. clearly there is a love of Hellboy here yeah. um, and hammering these out during lockdown uh, i think i think he's painted the everything bar the the box full of evil i think i think so although yeah, he's got most sure. of the box full of evil painted yeah. so he's yeah. it, it's not just that he's done the core set and done it well mm -hmm. he's done everything this is another and look at those bases touch. oh my god yeah <laughs> so 
all of the artwork for the board sections are this Mignola style. For the little fellas, he's just gone with a flat black, but all of the monsters have their bases painted to match the room that they spawn in in uh -huh. the investigation scenarios. So you can tell it's a big boss, not just a regular monster, when you can see the uh, the tile under them, essentially. And, it, you know, and, and again, you can see here what I was mentioning earlier, that it's not like... You could easily just go in and paint these with just a, a splash of brown on the bottom, a little bit of tan on the top, and that's bish bash bosh. But there's actual detail work into going into sort of like developing the shading and the highlighting and all that kind of thing as well to actually make these things pop so that the whole set looks like it all matches together, which I think is important, especially with the board game, because you don't yeah. want some elements, elements to be painted up this really high quality and then some just not be bothered with. You want everything to look like it all fits together. And I think that's definitely something that Perpetic Berserker has done really well with this collection. Oh, very much so. I mean, across the board, from, from the smallest little minion to the biggest monster, and there are some honking monsters that he's painted, um, there's just been so much work done throughout the uh, throughout the actual project. At that point, he did disassemble that to reassemble it in a more comic book styling, <laughs> um, which just takes it to a whole other level of madness. Madness, I say, because clearly he didn't have to. That could have been given a dry brush of silver and then just paint the head dead flesh and move on. Mm. But I was like, no. It needs to be more accurate and it needs to have a dome on top. <laughs> and so he made the dome on top. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah. one, of the, one of the other things with this project that I think is quite nice as well is that um, oh, like Pathetic, Pathetic Berserker has stepped in and been like, I'll, I'll start off with some of the sort of core bits and pieces, so the troops and the, the different sort of smaller monsters that you're going to, the minions that you're going to be engaging with. And I'll test out my skills and develop things there and, you know, work things up. So then later on in the project, when you get to see the monsters and the characters we talked about as well, Jeremy was mentioning, hmm. they get to that sort of like higher quality level as well. So there's a development of skill throughout the project, which I think is great. And I, I mean, I'm a big fan of werewolves and those are some of the best looking werewolves and wolves I think I've seen. So. Yeah. <laughs> They're great. I love those. Yeah, they are sensational. And it's, it's when he's taken steps that you may not think about taking. I mean, um, you'd really have to fire on to see some of the other stuff, which is probably on the next page. But um, I think it is. It's not, and maybe I should be the Conqueror Worm. I can't remember the name for that. Oh, yeah, the Conqueror Worm is one of the last posts, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's the reverse of the highlights. So the, the most lit color is the deepest shade where you would normally put it. So if you were painting it, Normally you would go, okay, well, that's a recess. That's going to be my dark. That's going to be my black, my dark brown, whatever it happens to be. Whereas he's gone, no, here's the front cover of that. Uh, and therefore that's going to actually be striking white yeah. as if it's lit there from we within. Go. Hellboy. Yeah. <laughs> the various Hellboys, including Peanuts. Yeah. Not Mexican Hellboy, though. No Luchador version of him yet. But um, I, I, I that's, he's coming. that's one of the things I think is really cool about this in terms of it um, and for anybody painting up something to do with a board game, sorry, with a licensed game, I think, is having that really nice reference image from comic books or TV and all that kind of thing. And then using that as, as your basis for how you can make the schemes look on the tabletop. And I think there's a real element of skill in actually being able to recreate that graphic novel, Mike Mignola's look yeah. on the miniatures and stuff. And I think it looks great. It's fantastic. Good old Lobster Johnson. Where, <laughs> where is this worm? Do I have to like, Jump all the way down this page. Pretty much, yeah. There, there, there it is. Go. There's the start oh, of it, oh, and oh. you'll see the finished version. So, yeah, get well. that now then. There's an Abe. Hello. I mean, Abe was looking awesome there, but we'll... <laughs> but yeah, so there you go. That's that kind of reverse styling to the sort of um, the. the, yeah, the it's like a reverse yeah. zenith, essentially. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, the the most the highest points are the darkest in this case because you have that lava feel. And effectively, look, when we were looking through this project, I think it was that image, and I think mm -hmm. some of the stuff for Hellboy and the characters and things that were like, wow, this is, this is awesome. And then you look back and you see some of the other stuff, like the frogmen and that kind of thing, and you see how much detail's gone into the big frog moth, like frog beer moth creature and all that kind of thing yeah. as well. It's 
variables. Even for the tokens and the objective markers. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that has just come from that image where he's mm -hmm. gone, you know what? It should be lit from inside, essentially. And so he's gone ahead and lit it from inside. And it's, it's really you know, awesome. <laughs> it's a genius way of doing it. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that really is a good, a good interpretation, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. probably one that a lot of people wouldn't think of. You know, it's just. Uh, Plus, it's bold that they've been able to just go, right, that's, that's what I'm going to do. That's, that's the actual divide. Yeah. I'm just going to go with that. I'm not going to be blending mm -hmm. that or anything. Because that, that's the kind of thing that runs the gambit of it looking unfinished. But when you see the final look of the miniature, it actually makes sense and it pops. Which is really also, um, Mignola's art style lends itself to that. It, does that, uh, it is very harsh. Kura, yeah. Kura mm -hmm. Shara, is that it? There, there's no blending. It's just harsh divides between them. So it keeps in feeling with that. Mm -hmm. It's also a, a very good um, project for people who are bulk painting board game stuff because he has some interesting tips throughout like even though some of those things don't go together mm -hmm. they're not for the same scenarios or they're not for the same case files but they have a similar way to be painted so he's gone okay well the three hairy ape looking people like uh gorilla with or chimp with a gun and, and that sort of thing they shouldn't be painted together but when you're batch painting, it makes sense to put them together. And later on, he, he has a grip that, again, are a desperate grip, but they're all going to have a, a recurring purple theme. So it's like, these are the pieces that will be painted together, despite where they're going to actually fit in when I'm playing the game, just to get that um, speed running throughout the painting. So it's it's a, a mixture of the actual techniques he's used for the painting and, and the techniques he's used to put the project together. It's like, this is how you batch paint a board game, essentially. This is your one-stop shop whether it's Hellboy or um, anybody else. I don't I can't remember. Gloomy if you're painting things like Blood Rage or all those different things, yeah. you know, paint things to sit, you know, work yeah. within the certain remit of what you, what you know, if you have a bunch of monsters that all look the same color, when you look at the artwork, yeah. paint that alongside the troops that match that kind of thing. So. Evil Turkey. <laughs> I mean, Turkey even the Turkey <laughs> was like, wow, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You've and got if, to have an evil turkey. Yeah, and if people want to be really appalled by it, you know, there's a man in the wings. If people want to be really appalled by it, there's like, you know, uh, supposed to be playing one night and then they couldn't play for, I can't remember what the reason was. So he, he instead painted another batch of miniatures. You go, right, if I had a night free from gaming, I wouldn't get a batch of miniatures done. There wouldn't be a whole host <laughs> of them. You know, I, I might have cleaned a couple up. Bring in a jar. Wow. But yeah. Uh, that's our winner for skill. Mm. Uh, so a 50 quid voucher winging its way over to you if you go and claim your prize. So, yeah, very cool. All right. Getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> Next category is the idea. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the first of these um, goes to SPI6712. And this was, and uh, we sort of gone into sort of a description of all the different categories. Idea is the one where it's like, hey, that is a great, cool idea. You have taken like a, a really awesome concept. And even if you haven't finished lots of elements of it or that kind of different thing, the whole sort of focus of what you're trying to do is great. And this was um, spring cleaning Warhammer. And effectively, the reason why this has gone to, well, this runner um, has gone to SPI is because of the title, really. It's mm. taking that massive collection of stuff that has existed in, you know, in boxes and all the different things and then bringing it back to life as part of this new project over the last couple of months. Uh, and it's not just Warhammer. There's even a little bit of like Kings of War in there as well, which is very cool. Uh, and so, yeah, it's a, a really awesome sort of um, celebration of the very sort of focus of what the Spring Cleaning Challenge is all about, this project. Yeah, it truly is. And it's so diverse as well um, when he's getting in there and actually starting to dig in going, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to start with this. And then a little bit down the line, it's like, you know what? I've, that's done now. So I'm going to move on. And I found these that I really want to do. And they, and it's like every time a project or a, a part of the project was completed, then it progressed to something else and continued and really pushed what the sprinkling challenge 
was all about, which was resurrecting things yeah. that had languished, uh, either Let's... unloved, unfinished, or broken, and getting them back up and running again. Let me see where this project started because this I, I filtered it the other way around. This is, so this, is yeah, <laughs> this this was this was kind of effectively the initial idea of the project was hmm. I'm going to take stuff that was previously Warhammer Fantasy, yes, and I'm going to turn it into Age of Sigmar stuff. Hmm. And in of itself, that's a cool idea, and it's one that we've obviously looked at in the studio. You know, when we've been taking a lot of our old armies and then putting them onto brown bases and refactoring them and that kind of thing. And so it was a really great idea to sort of like embrace that idea of the spring hot spring spring clean challenge and be like right this was used for a different game i'm going to reinvent it for use in a new one uh, which I thought was very cool uh, and it's not just for the high elves as well there's lizard men and all sorts of things in there as well yeah you may remember the bretonians lloyd because he did the ott um, yep. banner yeah. and shields mm -hmm. which i think is where we'd seen it a few months ago but it, it, it has been i'm not going to say relentless but every time he set himself a target he's finished that target and then pushed on and done something mm -hmm. else. Um, and and that, that's why it ends up moving from Age of Sigmar into Kings of War, because essentially, done with, done with Warhammer, finished all of that, <laughs> need to find something else to push on with now. And so we started getting stuck into the Kings of War stuff. And you get some really nice pieces where those Basileans, which I really like as a unit of paladins, uh, but he tried a couple of different techniques and they went badly wrong and he catalogued that he went i've tried this that was terrible not doing that again let's try it this way there's that metallic color i was telling you about ben you should buy that that's great um <laughs> this color here oh that, that that range they are so nice as you can see they are so shiny um but he was trying to use masking techniques and stuff like that and uh and it didn't come off and so he went back and did it a different way to get that final final approach to it and I like seeing that in the projects because, yes, people can learn from what you've done, but sometimes they can also learn from your failures. From your well. failures. Mm. And there's often the, the idea that you don't catalog those. Mm. Nobody wants to see things going badly wrong. And then you go, oh, how'd you do that? Oh, I did it with a liquid mask. And then <laughs> somebody else gets it and then run into exactly the same problem that you probably encountered. Yeah. So that's detailed but, here, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all detailed in there and, and how he, he got got around it and got it working again mm -hmm. and so that's that's gorgeous i really like that it was i think i think one of the joys of looking through the project is uh, that effectively spee has gone I, i've had a really cool idea of what i want to do today i'll sit down and i'll do that mm -hmm. and it's been like i want to make uh, a graveyard large base for my undead for for king's war i'll do that today that kind of thing i'll rebase some um some high elves and get them ready to use on the tabletop i'll do that today uh, and even though, like in some cases, obviously the tutorial level isn't as high as it would for like the yeah. other categories and things. This was again one of those projects that kind of spanned the gambit between a few, uh, well, all three of the categories yeah. really, which is really cool. Which is what you know what you want to see. It's it's not just a catalogue of finished work, but there's work in progress. There's thoughts. There's failures. There's successes. Uh, there's some nice little hints and tips in there with the tutorials. So I mean, when it gets to doing the multi base for the undead. And he's, he's got them all sort of set down where he thinks he wants them to go. And then he draws around the bases and then numbers them so he knows where they're to go back <laughs> in. And, um, and you're going, okay, fair enough. Um, the fact he's using a mixture of Praetorian Guard in there is, uh, you know, is not, not why I picked him. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, and it, it, it's one of those really nice things, I think, that a lot more people should embrace is that obviously a lot of us have growing miniature collections. And, you know, no one's going to tell you to stop buying miniatures. Keep buying them. They're great. but if you've got stuff sitting there that you haven't used in a long time, crack it out and repurpose it for something new and do something different with it. And I think this project is a really good example yeah. of exact of doing exactly that. So. There's a load more to that project, but oh yeah, oh, there's we could be here all day. Yeah. <laughs> all all yeah. of the projects are linked down below in the, the post over on, on tabletop. So yep. go and check that out. <laughs> okay. Next runner up in the idea category. I'm going to let Jerry take this one away. So the next runner up is Apple Mac. And Apple Mac has dug out his English Civil War. And this, I think, is the very epitome of the Spring Clean Challenge. Mm -hmm. Resurrected after 40 years. Mm -hmm. So this is um, stuff okay. from the 80s from Brian Ansell and Wargames Foundry that he got together. Um, 
bought them up, thought about doing with them, and then they sort of lurked around not being finished or half being finished or pushed into a corner and then chipped. And so this all got dug out again with the idea of playing, um, I don't even know if it's a specific rule set. It may be a rule set he's making himself. Um, hmm. I think it's mentioned really. a couple of times, but it's it's uh, you know it's it's a case of I'm going to be basing them this way because this is the type of game I want to play, and then he just goes mad. So I mean, if you see the amount of stuff in all those little trays, it's like I've got all of this, and now I just need to put all of this together and paint it. And when you you look at that end shot with the the army arrayed, and then you compare it to like the initial shots where it's just mounds upon mounds of lead uh the the range he's done in such a, a a short period of time was fantastic but he also got in and went i want to make there's you know culverts and and in entrenched gambin positions so they were scratch built or scratch building the houses or making the wound counters it's a a single topic a single idea of doing this English Civil War game and it's there from start from piles of lead and bits of board down to building the bases and then putting it all together and getting everything ready so this game can be played in full it's it's a one-stop shop and it was absolutely stunning um, there I've got all those tins full of miniatures and it's a lot of it is <laughs> oh, there. I mean, yeah, yeah yeah like every yeah. one of those is a regiment you know you're just looking at going well you know there's like 12 horsemen per tin there there's oh my god there's so many of them Mm. um and the paint jobs are decent you know color and depth type of thing so it's 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 not going to win painting awards across the board but it shows when you put your mind to it what is achievable just by Mm. breaking it down and going i need these and this is what i'm going to do Mm. and it was absolutely stunning to see you know a miniature range finally getting onto the table in a position to be played in full yeah after you know lurking for well probably longer than a lot of the viewers of this video have, have been alive for i think th- i think that's key it, it, <laughs> it, it, it's a it's a collection that has been sitting there for nigh on 40 years or whatever yeah and now it's you know getting a new lease of life and if anything it bodies the idea of what the spring peen challenge is about yeah. i think that's it oh yeah very much so. Um, Gee, where's look at the amount of these? Yeah, yep. Oh yeah, that, this was not a small project. This oh, was not. My God. This was not horses. This was not me going. I've got a U boat. I'm going to paint my U boat and then failing to paint my U boat, <laughs> which didn't require that much to finish it. This was somebody going. I've got several thousand ton of lead that needs to be started from scratch, mm. and then completely done and based, and has been. And this one. Th- Apple Mac, well, maybe it's because Apple Mac is is advanced in years. But he started on the 20th of March on the Spring Clean Challenge and finished on the 20th of June, the last day of the Spring Clean Challenge. And some people have still <laughs> been posting, you know, posting before then because they were older projects and then joining in or posting after them because they're still working on it. Yeah. He literally went, this is, this is the date you're working towards. I'm going to do this. <laughs> and by... God, he did. I mean, they're scratch building the the entrenchments and then the, the Gambians yeah. is just absolutely gorgeous. I love no, it. I love no, it so much. No extensions here. I love this. It's got a wee henge as well. Oh, it's got a henge. Yeah, because it was English <laughs> Civil War. So they might have fought near Salisbury Plain at some point, or maybe it's just a different henge. You know, because bear in mind, Stonehenge is not itself a henge, although all henges are named after Stonehenge. Oh. Go figure. So yeah, yeah. even the buildings are scratched. Even the building. Oh yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing was already sitting waiting for this, except obviously the the tons of lead. It was you know I'm everything's being built now. I need it now. Um, and that final picture was just like, oh my god, this is stunning. He says he's not finished, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, you're not. You know, you're done. You're dusted. Apple Mac, you're a legend. Absolute legend. I mean, look at that. It makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. See so much pike and shot on the tabletop. And to think just a few months ago, the vast majority of that was sitting in a tin. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or yeah. it didn't exist yeah. at all. No, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. I don't think any of it exists. Oh. I don't think he came into this with anything painted. I think, you know, at least not painted to completion. 
There may have been a few things that were started and then abandoned, but yeah. Absolute legend. Right. The winner. Yeah. The winner. Yeah. So the winner is uh you know what? I'm gonna let Jerry talk about this one as well because this was a little this was a little darling of, of Jerry's, and I think I'm gonna let him expunge the virtues of it. So <laughs> this, <laughs> this one this one I've been trying to show to Lloyd for a while because I knew he would enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> But it, we never quite, it always got sort of pushed slightly down the, the order whenever we were doing golden buttons and that sort of thing. And if Apple, if this hadn't won, I would have pushed hard for Apple Mac to win. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. Um, but this, this really exemplified what the idea category was about. And this is a train called Alice. Yeah, boy. Trains. Trains indeed. Um, so if you actually... If you flip this, this round, yeah. Uh, if it, we'd been clever, we would have done that in advance. Um, essentially, he got a picture. So during World War II, two armored trains were actually built in England to run around the, the coast from Scotland down the, um, the east coast in case of German invasion. So this has been built with a view to playing something like a very British Civil War or um, Operation Sea Line type alternative history games where the Germans invade. So he got that photograph and it was like, I'm now going to build that train. So he got himself a kit from Sarissa, which is a very basic wooden train kit with a flatbed um, carriage at the back, and then went about recreating the actual train using bits from here, there, and everywhere, begged, borrowed, or stolen, presumably, um, allegedly. I have no, no basis in that one. Uh, but he, he has done a stunning amount of work and it's you're looking at it going okay well that's a nice little tree and i suppose and he's gone and gone you know what it actually needs the correct machinery in the engine house so he scratch built all the valves and bits and pieces um you'll find that further down no don't worry you're, you're not missing anything <laughs> yet um he went about, I, love, I love this, just the, just the fact of putting this yes. in and then covering it. Putting equipment in and then covering it all up. Yeah. Covering it up. So, and it is just, it's just yeah. shapes under there. So there's like mm. a couple of boxes, a couple of upright bits of foam card and offcuts of foam card to give you squares and then modge podge and tissue to make a canvas covering. Nice. That then goes solid. Uh, and then it's just like, yep, done with that bit. Climbing on, here we go here. Pannier tank engine overhaul. So started doing minor conversions to make it look more realistic. And you're going, okay that yeah sure yeah why not so off comes the other parts <laughs> and in goes the detailing so you've got the steam gauge the wheels uh all the various paraphernalia including even the uh the, the open bit of the furnace itself. and all that kind of thing and stuff yeah. i mean and then put doors on it because you know why would it not have doors well in fact i can probably hear him thinking why have they not put doors here <laughs> building the curved under section for the, the coal bunker at the exactly, back because yeah. that obviously because it's a curved section it doesn't have anything on the kit and they don't expect yeah. you to put anything there and say you know what it's those fine details that really go into making this so interesting a build because it's it's a short little glimpse into time you know it was like 1940 or 41 and they built two of these and then presumably they were scrapped not long afterwards so that they never really exist but um but well, working out to the crew as well yeah, well, he's going to the crew and the gun. So the gun is, as you can see there, from a bunker, uh, dual purpose, so it can be lifted in or out. I also quite like that bunker because he's got, you know, like, keep calm, carry on, and yeah. play an identification yeah, guide for the German. Thing, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then you know, when, he, when, he, <laughs> when he, we will fight them on the beaches, style thing. Um, but yeah, he goes through where he gets all the pieces from and how he's going to go about detailing this and what he needs to do to make this a home guard defended train. Uh, which I just think is absolutely superb. Mm. The bunker is just a bunker. Um, and then the gun shield. So the gun shield on the train is noticeably curved. The gun shield for anything else isn't. So out comes the, I'm going to say, that looks like an a exacto blade or scalpel that he's yeah. used that to make a form to bend it around to get the curves into the gun shield, which is a step that, you know, a skill modeler, well, may take but a gamer would probably go oh the gun shield's not quite the right oh, shape but i'm gonna you know live with that because i don't really mind i was just looking um, to see if we could see what he was working you're looking for the photograph of the guys again yeah. aren't you 
No, no, the gun sailed to know. He keeps the old photograph up in front of him the whole time. To know how he knew. The and then he gets it. in and goes through the the whole build, including detailing on the um, armor when he starts to build the the armored shell that the gun carriage will sit on. So it's all foam card construction, and then he does this really nice thing with rivets. So you can see there, that's just foam core. So that's cardboard with probably five mil foam core. I would have went with three mil thinner. But then he's taken a piece of plastic card, so sheet styrene, and then used this tool to make punch rivets yeah. that he can then glue over the foam card. So then you've got the riveting on the outside. Nice. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's just and it beautiful. almost basically Look matches exactly how it is in the I've photo as well, which is great. So I haven't counted There's the, the curved gun shield as well. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> there, there you go. So, they, so even the gun shield's correct and proper. Oh, yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. So it's it is an exacting a piece of scale modeling as it is mm -hmm. uh, a war games piece, although it's both, uh, and you know, getting in there and actually putting it all together and getting it all ready. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we get to this part here, and that is it's completed, ready for painting. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is where it ends. And the reason we picked this was because of the idea behind it. We didn't need to see the finished the fully, op the, option. The, yeah. yeah, the paint sort of version. fully painted version. Yeah, this is it in all but painted form. Um, so it's 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 the idea executed beautifully. And we, uh, you know, he might go in. He might be a great painter. He might not be a great painter. He might, you know, thought, well, I'm, I've got that done. I'm going to set it to one side until I've got some other bits done that need to be painted. But having it primed and seeing the work that's gone into it, the idea behind it, mm. executed so perfectly for me, it's just mm. just gorgeous to see. How yeah. wait. Can't wait to see that actually painted. <laughs> yeah. That, that he, is a worthy winner. Big, we thought you'd like project, the train. Yeah. So I imagine he will come back to that. I got to smash that idea button. I logged mm. in just to do that. Smash that idea. <laughs> fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And we're not done yet? No. Yeah. So um, we have two honorable mentions, which we'll sort of quickly fling through. But um, you can obviously find the links down to these as well uh, over on on tabletop but the first of these honorable mentions goes to zing and we talked about this um previously on a show as part of a golden button uh, but this was a really awesome project that looked at the bits box for the greater good um and you know what lloyd yeah. back when we talked about this doing when we were talking about the, the com spot and stuff you were like is the banner gonna get some stuff on it well, yes, it oh, is. It is oh, going to get some stuff on it. I, I, I can't go <laughs> all the route there. So let's see. So it was a proper sort of dive into the collection of random stuff that, um, that Zing had in the collection, uh, a whole bunch of space marines and orcs and Eldar and, and all sorts of things like that. And it was put together as a little bit of a, um, well, effectively a, a commemoration of the event that was isolation and still is yeah. for a few people, I suppose. But uh, yeah. Very cool. <laughs> the what happened during 2020. Style. What happened during 2020 <laughs> is that everyone in 40k banded together to fight back the coronavirus menace. Yeah. <laughs> here, here was his banner. Like the last yeah. time I seen it, this is the way the banner it was. Went. Just that was that it. Was like, it yeah. was it was almost completely painted, but the only photograph we had was from the reverse. And at mm -hmm. the time, we're talking about yeah. the fact that. Um, GW have used this Iwo Jima style banner raising several times in the past. And I was thinking maybe it's going to get something like the old Golden Demon banner on the front side. Um, but he didn't. He went the other way. Uh, so and he, he really included, reinforced yeah. the, uh, the, the COVID-19. So obviously we've got the COVID-19, but this is a tribute to the NHS. So it was a very awesome sort of little nod to all those wonderful key workers that have been doing all their fantastic work yeah. at the moment. A great little project, that one. Very that was cool. a nice touch. I didn't expect it. No. No, once it came up, though, once he, it, I'd seen the, the, the banner with the NHS on it, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, that's, that, that is just the perfect touch, especially after building the Rona there to attack them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the coronavirus is, yeah, we haven't pointed yeah. that out. Yep, like, no. In case you haven't noticed. They came from behind. <laughs> 
there are many strange things in the lore of Warhammer 40,000 and they are now one of them. Yeah. So. To be fair, they are by no means the strangest thing. <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, so that was one of our honourable mentions. Mm. And uh, the other one goes to uh, One for Four Artist. Yes. Who did something that was just, it was just so charming. So this was spring cleaning a miniature garden, mm. which was wonderful. So One for Four is a big, big, big fan of Volsung, uh, which is a game that we've featured uh, on Untyper Top quite a few years. Now. Yeah. Um, and this was just creating lots of wonderful foliage and bushes and trees, and garden parts. And graves. And graves, <laughs> uh, and little flower like boxes and all that kind of thing. And or graves. Used in a range of different games. But yeah, it was yeah. very cool. <laughs> but it was really nice to see um, the extent he went. So if, if Lloyd doesn't focus on the graves, graves. You, you do get things like building um, the fountains and building up the flower boxes and and the work he's done with the plants that can be used to scatter for various games um obviously it will fit into some better than others but the, this was just a more or less a a look at the dressing for your table and i know obviously you're a big fan of table dressing lloyd sweet um, so it, here we go urban and gardening yeah, yeah and it's the stuff that people people may not think about doing or alternatively, you know, they'll, they'll look for shop bought versions, um, which tend to be very either very generic or very specific. Uh, and so, trying to find things that suit the games you're playing isn't always possible. And just going in and going, well, you know, I've got X, Y, and Z for these games, but I could add things like this, mm -hmm. and you end up with what is essentially a flower stall. Uh, serves no yeah. game purpose, but looks which, nice. Which works really well because we've got some of these. <clears throat> things left over yeah. from Volsung sitting around the studio and this bit's always blank so yeah. every time you lay out your marketplace it always looks unfinished that completes it yeah yeah exactly and it's so yeah. simple to do um and that that picture in and of itself <laughs> when i was just seen so that a while ago was just beautiful because <laughs> it just looks like a gardener He's just in there with his doc ock limbs <laughs> you know, just pruning and shearing yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was just it was really nice and really bright. I mean, these trees coming up um, are particularly uh, I don't want to say poppy, but they're so vibrant. And Volsung has this very Dick Tracy esque feel, where it is very bright pop yeah. colours. Uh, so seeing things like that on the tabletop just really add a splash uh, across the greenery. So it was yep. nice to nice to see these. People underestimate just how effective it is to make some planters because when we were doing infinity tables a few years back we made planters and it transformed yeah. the table oh yeah. yeah having having somewhere to just drop greenery and mm. flowers and apple trees and all that sort of stuff in just adds so much life to your gaming table yeah mm. very much so because it, it, when you look at when you look at a city it's not you know just a big slab of gray there's you know exactly trees and flowers and all sorts growing all over the place so delightful little fountain and then statutory for his fountain so yeah it's just it's it's the incidentals that really make a tabletop work and and make it look we often talk about things having a lived in space and i think this is just a, a prime example of it i mean how much more interesting is that not just in game terms with all of a sudden having scattered terrain that you can hide behind but actually looking like a street in a city that has rows of trees you know mm. it's it's exactly what you expect to find outside a cafe for example little tables there and you know a few potted plants mm. you know it's a delightful little bistro that people can visit on their off days when they're not riddling people full of you know <laughs> bullets <laughs> you know, tommy gun and volsung so yeah, yeah. beautiful well that brings us to the end Congratulations to all the winners. Remember, we have a voucher left over, so get your comments in below on YouTube and for an extra chance. Get on over to On Tabletop, get a comment in there too. Uh, lads, we will push on because we've got a, an XLBS to make for all our cultists as well. We do, yeah. So, although there was no weekend of this week, you cultists are still getting an XLBS show on Sunday. So, we'll see you then. And until then, happy gaming. 
go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.